Hi, 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 hi. Hi, and welcome to the day eight of 12 Days of Creativity. So the music production challenge where we make a track in 12 steps. I make a track and I also challenge you to make one as well. So this far we have been focusing on just creating clips. We have created loops, experimented with sounds and different kind of effects. So today we're gonna arrange these to a full length track. So the vocals we created in the arrangement view and everything else we have created in the session view. So now starts the time when I'm going to just start experimenting which clips fit together. So I'm just going to play them in different combinations. And then when I find one that I like, I'm going to go under the scenes and select capture and insert scene. So in this point, I'm not really thinking about whether these clips or this group of clips is going to be the verse. This one is going to be the chorus. In this point, I'm just seeing which ones fit together because not all the clips are always going to play at the same time. And that is what creates interest and variety, variety, variety into the song. So full disclosure, this actually took me maybe two to three hours. And this is how many scenes I created in the end. And it also took me some time to figure out in which order would I want them to come in the song. So this means that it was time to record the scenes from session view to arrangement view. So I activated the, the main global recording button and started to play the scenes in the order that I like them in to the arrangement view. This took about three to four minutes. And this means that then after this, we have a linear arrangement that we can start to work on. This episode is sponsored by DistroKit. Through DistroKit, you can publish your music, but they also have a lot of features that are amazing for advertising it. So example, hyperfollow, one link stop with all your links and everything that you want people to know about your track in one place. You can fully customize it the way that you want. Another cool thing is lyrics. You know, like when you go to Instagram or TikTok, you can see the lyrics of a track. Well, in DistroKid, you can sync them very easily. DistroKid also has a lot of connections with other platforms, like you can access Spotify artists from there or Apple Music for artists, but also you can get a YouTube official artist channel through DistroKid. It means that you get that little note after your name, but also all your songs go automatically on your channel. DistroKid is also extra lovely because they are giving all my followers minus 7% off of your subscription. Also, if you do finish this challenge, you get minus 40% off. Finish this challenge and submit your track because then you will get it. And that is very good, <laughs> very good discount. So thank you so much DistroKid for always supporting my channel. Okay, let's get back into the video. Okay, now comes one of the most important parts of the arrangement. So deciding the sections of the song. So I think I'm going to go for A, B, and then A and B section. So very typical EDM house type of structure. So I'm going to have a bit longer A section in the beginning with a tiny bit of intro, then really hooky. A chorus, then a bridge, which is kind of similar than the beginning, and then another ending bit chorus. So we had our vocals in arrangement view anyway. So what I'm going to do now is just copy paste them into the arrangement. I'm basics is just exploring where they should go and in what order and yeah, where and how. This process usually takes a quite a while as well. Okay, so now I have all the vocals there. I have sections. I created little gaps between Something also sections to add space for drops and transitions. And this is the intro. I wanted to make it as short and impactful as possible. I never thought my head would be the silent. So verses, I wanted to be more fluid, more spacey, and then I wanted to, to have very impactful drops and transitions. Choruses, I wanted to have a lot more flyer, edgier, more rhythm. Um, so that's massive contrast between A sections to B sections. Feel, feel really light 
walking on this ground. To be very transparent with you as well, as much as I like example the vocals and stuff, I feel like they're not perfect and I, I feel like there's quite a lot of more work to do with them as well as the choruses to make them a bit more catchy. But instead of using now hours and hours and hours to figure that out, I'm just gonna trust the process, do the next steps and in the end of it I'm gonna see if they still need work. We have a lot of steps still to go and you know that can still change in those steps. So automation creates a lot of movement into a track, but movement can be either using FX or dynamics. And in arrangement process, I like using dynamics to create movement as well as structure. So I have specially used a lot of auto filters as usual. So example, we have this bass and I was thinking like it was taking a lot of space on the low end, whole beginning, and the transition felt really abrupt to go to the to the chorus suddenly so i created auto filter that takes off the low end slowly when we go towards the first chorus so alongside a lot of auto filter i also added a gate to the last synth and i wanted to add a ducking effect to it to I add more space and movement and it's only active in the last chorus And as you can see, there's also two auto filters on that track to add movement and all of it is automated as well. Part of this arrangement, I was also like trying to figure out how all the sounds fit together. So I figured out that I need to add EQ8 and add some mid-side EQing to example the this abbreviated synth that I created to the second A part. It is not what I imagined. It would have not fit it to this part otherwise because there were so much mid frequencies already. So by me separating it to the very left and right, I managed to really create this really wide effect while having a lot of mid frequencies and a lot of space, but also not creating masking. And on the right, you can see Clifford's Tower of York. You can't really see it from here, can you? Well, it's there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I just want to talk a little bit about jealousy and envy. Poor people staring. I feel like jealousy and envy are vibes as a creative that we all are very familiar with but also we feel embarrassed about them we feel embarrassed that we even feel them why why am i this freaking selfish that i'm comparing myself to others and all this firstly very normal we all do it whatever level you are in your career everybody feels jealousy and envy because you never feel like you're enough you never feel like what you have achieved is enough so remember it is it is enough it is whatever you are doing it's enough and wherever you are in your career is okay. We are all in our own timelines. So what that means is that we all come from different backgrounds, with different obstacles, with different mindsets and thoughts. There is no way we can compare our journey to somebody else's, yeah? And also, second point, we always think that someone else is above us. And what we need to do for that is put them on our level. We need to stop thinking that everybody is on a pedestal higher than ours. No, everybody's just human. Everybody's gone through exactly similar kind of shit than we are dealing with, especially when it comes to creativity or making songs or publishing songs or whatever. What you feel, your fears and your anxieties about music is something that some massive artists would have felt as well. Our psychology is quite simple like that. And third, I had a third point. Well, you're gonna get it in a end of one of the other other videos, uh, videos, other videos. Here is my patrons. The conversation continues there of 12 days of creativity. I hope your days are going well, and I can't wait to hear everybody's tracks again. Remember, then there's no pressure, there's no judgment, or whatever you're creating. Just please submit it. Just please put it out there. Yeah.